Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Chappell, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360. And welcome to today's webcast, InfraWorks 360 Traffic Simulation Preview. I have Gordon Duncan with me. He's going to be the primary speaker. Um, but before we get to, door, get to Gordon's presentation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the community. So uh, if you're new to our series, we've been doing this twice a month on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. So we're uh, right, on, right on track with that today. And our goals here are to uh, get you informed about InfraWorks 360 um, features and functionality, but we want to do it from the perspective of the product team, the folks who, who actually write the code and come up with the technology. And this will give you a chance to um, kind of see where they're coming from and, and why they've developed what they've done and give you a chance to provide some feedback. And uh, just generally speaking, we want to bring you, the users, closer to the folks who, uh, who make the software. So uh, we thought this would be a good opportunity to do that. Um, just want to let everyone know our next webcast will be on the first Wednesday of August. That's August 5th. And it'll be on flood simulation with uh, InfraWorks 360 Project Boulder, which is a labs project. Uh, very interesting project altogether because we're partnering with, a, with another company. And just what it does is, is, is just amazing. So we're going to hear from Matt Anderson for that webcast. And again, that's on August 5th from 12 to 1 Eastern. Um, and where to find out about, uh, about that, more about it and, and register are on the various links that I have listed there, um, the community site, the InfraWorks 360 forum, and as well as social media, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are also good places to, to look for that uh, information and register for the webcast. Some other webcast topics that we're thinking of having, just so you know uh, what's coming or what's on our minds as far as good topics. The first few are kind of on the calendar in pencil, um, Project Boulder, which I mentioned, and then Field Assets, Collaboration, and Scripting are coming up in, in, uh, in the near future. But then we've got a list of just ideas that we're kicking around of, of what might be good topics. So um, if you have any ideas for topics that you'd like to see, please feel free to Type them in your uh, in your chat window or your questions window, and we'll add them to the list. And uh, you know, we'll talk with the product team and see about getting them on the, on the docket. Uh, I'd like to do a poll. This is a poll that I've been doing on every uh, webcast so far. I think this is our seventh one, so we're uh, we're moving right along with this series. And I want to know what your current usage level is with InfraWorks 360. So if you wouldn't mind, please uh, provide your answer to the poll on your screen. And I'll give everyone a few minutes to answer. And our hope is that as we look back through the data um, over the time that this series exists, we see everything very consistently shifting downward in that list from you know not even having it installed down to not living without it. So, uh, so far with the results that have come in, it looks like... Um, we're kind of heavy in the middle with uh, I've installed it and I've dabbled, um, dropping off under I regularly use it, and right now only 8% say that they use it on every project. Looks like about 15% of you still need to vote, so if you haven't cast your vote yet, please do. And I'll close the poll down in about five seconds. All right. Thanks for providing your answers there. That's really uh, useful information for, for us. I mentioned the InfraWorks 360 community earlier. Um, this is a great place to interact with other folks using InfraWorks 360, as well as the product team and other uh, Autodesk staff members. Um, the main page is under autodesk.com slash InfraWorks 360 community. And there you'll see things like a feed from the forum where users uh, ask and answer questions. The gallery where uh, users post their uh, images and videos of InfraWorks 360 projects that they're working on. So if you're new to InfraWorks 360 and you're wondering what kind of things can you do with it, the gallery is a great place to go because it's not strictly Autodesk folks putting things up there. It's users and real projects that are uh, that are being um, being done and have been successful. And not only that, there's a lot a lot of times commentary to go along with the projects to tell you how they were built, what purpose they were built for, 
um, and you know what what were the benefits and maybe even some of the challenges with them. We've also got the social hub, which is a feed of not only social media but uh, popular blogs that feature InfraWorks 360. We've got a video tab with all the latest videos, including upcoming webcasts and uh, the webcast recordings. And then uh, we also have the forum, which kind of in itself is a, is a community. And uh, that's, again, where you can ask questions and get answers either from other users or from Autodesk folks. Our product team is awesome. Um, I think they're the most active product team out there when it comes to answering the questions that, uh, that are posted by, by our users. They, they do a wonderful job of responding to those questions. So please feel free to do that. We also have our idea station up there. So if you see the little blow up at the bottom of the slide, um, if you go to autodesk.com slash InfraWorks 360 forum, you'll see the link for the InfraWorks 360 idea station. And this is an opportunity, if you've got ideas for, for how InfraWorks 360 can be improved, new features or improvements to existing features, you can post them up here and get support from other users and kind of build a case for, uh, for the new feature. And as you might guess, the, um, the ideas that get the most uh, attention from the community and the most support are more, more likely to be implemented in the software. So it's a great way for us to really hone in on what's important to you guys, the user community, uh, so that we know what to work on and move up in priority as we develop the software. I need to do a disclaimer, and this is especially true for, for today's presentation because the traffic simulation technology is entirely a preview. And so you need to understand that anything we talk about with preview features is not a promise that that technology is going to exist in a fully supported form at any time in the future. And really the only uh, guarantee that a technology is going to be a supported feature is when you actually see it there. So I need to provide that disclaimer. Um, that applies to any preview or labs technology, anything that's not fully supported. Please ask lots of questions as uh, Gordon is going through his, his presentation. Um, we have too large a group to allow audio questions, but you can use the chat or questions window. I'm not sure how it appears on your side, but you can type in your questions there. I'm here. Um, I think Chakri has joined us as well, and we will do our best to answer your questions. If we can't, um, we'll wait for an opportune time to break in and, and uh, ask Gordon to answer your questions. And if we still uh, run out of time, maybe we can follow up afterwards and provide some answers um, after the webcast is complete. So uh, please ask lots of questions. The more, the better. It makes it more interesting and engaging. Um, and if, uh, if you've got comments, those are welcome as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Gordon. Gordon, I will make you presenter. And you have the floor. And Gordon, if you're talking, we can't hear you because you may be on mute. OK, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Okay, I was just choosing which screen. Um, now, can you sh see that screen okay? You can see the home screen of InfraWorks? Yes, sir, we sure can. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Okay, thanks for that, Eric. Um, today, um, I'm going to show you a few of the features of the traffic sim simulation preview. Um, before I do that, I'll just say a few words about me, who I am, and where I've come from. I joined Autodesk about 18 months ago um, when my company's techn technology was acquired. I've been working in the field of traffic simulation for about um, 20 years, um, and most recently that was on a product called Commuter. Um, and it's that product that um, we're currently working with, and that's, that's a preview of that that we're looking at today being integrated into to InfraWorks. Um, so, how do you how do you get this yourself? How do you look at that? Well, the first thing you need to do is on the home screen, down here in this area, there's a whole bunch of preview features and traffic simulations. The one um, at the bottom there. So make sure that's switched on. When that's switched on, you'll get a disclaimer thing that comes up to, or an agreement that you have to agree to. Um, 
and then that will be remembered for previous uh, subsequent times when you open the software. So the model I'm going to use today, um, this one is uh, based on one of the examples that um, comes with the distribution. Um, so if you want to, you can um, try some of the things I'm doing in that model. Okay, here we are. Um, so in this model, um, if you go to uh, the roadway design, traffic simulation is part of the roadway design tools. So if we click on this guy here, um, you'll see uh, four icons down there and traffic simulation is um, one of those. So I've got a set of proposals here that I'll switch between, but in the, the base one, in the master, um, I don't have anything defined yet for traffic simulation. So when I switch that on, if I go into traffic simulation mode, you'll see the screen darkens a bit and some of the roads are being highlighted. Now, these are the roads that are design roads. Uh, in the current preview, the traffic simulation works on design roads only. The reason for that is that design roads have between them uh, design intersections and it's the intersections that we are, uh, need uh, to use for the traffic simulation. Um, so that's why currently at least you need to um, uh, convert these roads into into design roads. So if I, for those of you not familiar with that, if I just escape from that mode, if you want to create a, convert a existing road into a design road, um, you just select that road, um, edit and then there's a convert to design road feature. When you've done that, um, when you go into the traffic simulation mode, those roads will show up um, in different highlighting in blue in this case. So as the uh, message there, the tooltip says, to start you need to create what we call a traffic study area. So this is an area that uh, encapsulates um, your, your site or the area of interest to you that you're that you want to um, run the traffic simulation on so you just click that and um, we're going to focus on a little corridor here um, on this design road so if I um, just select an area here you can see wherever the boundary crosses a design road you'll get a uh, a blue square drawn um, and that is what we call a, a demand zone. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about them later um, but these are the origins or destinations for traffic within your model. So draw the polygon much like a coverage or, or another type of polygon and you'll see after you click the last one you'll um, see two panels that come up. One is the uh, asset panel for the traffic study area and the other is an animation player. We've no content in the animation player yet because we haven't run any simulations. Um, so to run a simulation you choose the configuration that you want and um, there's five preset configurations. You can create more if you want but those ones are, are created for you for each um, traffic study area that you create and then you just press the button that says run simulation. So I'll do that now. This is uh, a cloud service. So the model has to be published to the cloud before you can do that. And when you run a simulation, that simulation is um, sent to the cloud, uh, run on the cloud, and then the results stored there and then downloaded as soon as it's um, as soon as it's ready. With the um, quick simulation here, that's just running 10 minutes of simulation time. Um, so that should only take um, a couple of minutes to complete and download again. To save you waiting for that time, what I'll do is I'll switch to a proposal where I've already done that. So you can see here the area is similar um, and the animation player has already been 
um, updated. In fact, I've run two of the different proposals, uh, two of the different um, configurations there, the quick simulation and the short morning proposal. You can see them there. So if I click on this one here, it takes a few seconds to load the simulation. And then you can just use these play and rewind buttons. So if I press play um, and zoom in here, you can see the traffic um, running. It's running at 10 times real time there. So these buttons here, the times one, times two, times 10, times 30, allow you to control the speed of playback of the animation. Um, you can move about or move in and see the detail of, of that. There are um, a number of different vehicle types there. Um, I think there's some cars that you can see there. Here's a small um, minibus kind of van, um, SUV. Uh, there's also some trucks there too. Like I say, you can also uh, play the animation at different speeds depending on uh, what you want. Gordon, I just wanted to uh, mention... Uh, 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 sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I, I just wanted to point out uh, I'm looking at the animation coming through um, the, the webinar interface and it is a bit choppy and I think that what you're seeing on your end is actually fairly smooth, is that correct? Yeah, it is very smooth. I should have, I should have said that um, I don't know, perhaps, I don't know if there's much I can do about that. If I, if I play it at the slow speed, is it, is it any smoother, Eric? It is a bit smoother what at the that? slow speed. Yeah, and, and um, not even suggesting that there's anything well, you can do. I just wanted folks to know that uh, the, the effects of the animation when you're actually doing it yourself are very smooth. Um, I mean, I guess the best way to um, see that is just to try it for yourself and hopefully as I've shown here, it's fairly simple to, to set up. It's all you need to do is convert some roads to design roads if they're not design roads already and uh, draw out the traffic study area um, and press run simulation and you should be able to see some results uh, almost immediately. Okay, so one of the first questions that often comes up here is, well, that's, that's good, but how do I know I've got the right amount of traffic there on, on my roads? You know, you didn't see any step there where I entered the amount of traffic that we expect on these roads. Uh, and that's true. This, this initial part that I've shown you here is really just for a quick animation to allow you to see some traffic moving to illustrate what your design is like. If you want to uh, enter the traffic demand values, um, you need to use uh, what we call the traffic analyst panel. So for that, what I'll do is I'll switch to uh, another proposal again. looks quite similar. And if I right click on the traffic study area, you get this um, context menu. And you select traffic analyst panel. This opens uh, a separate window um, with a view of the model uh, the, the traffic model. So I'll just, it has a similar navigation interface to um, the main Infrax canvas, so I'll just try and orient that so that it's uh, um, in the same orientation. And those colors are rather light, I'm not sure if that's coming across okay on the um, on the webcast. Can you see the road edges there? Okay, Eric? Yes, they are coming across. You can see them pretty well. Okay, good. Right, so here one of the things that we're going to look at is what we call the uh, demand matrix. So if you go to the demand menu, select demands, you'll see uh, this window. 
And what this shows is a table of demands between the different origins and destinations. If I zoom into this window, you'll see there's a number of these uh, green boxes. Um, these were the boxes I was mentioning before when you drew the traffic study area. And at present, there's one wherever the study area boundary cuts uh, are one of your design roads. You can add more of these um, zones, if you like, within the traffic study area. But at the moment, we'll just work with the ones that are on the on the edges. Okay, so if I click on these numbers here, they show the um, demand between the different zones. So the cell here between two and four uh, shows the demand between that zone and that zone. If I click on uh, the row total, that shows you, that highlights um, all the demands between that zone and the others. And if I click here at the bottom, that shows the, um, the uh, arriving trips, so the trips that are arriving to that zone from the others. There are actually arrowheads if you zoom in a bit. I don't know if you can quite make that out. Arrowheads are quite small. The color there is an indication of the value. So the red ones uh, show the higher value trips, the more traffic going from each zone to each other zone. And blue is the lower value. So if I click on uh, this guy here, uh, that's 50. And this guy here, 36, that's the lowest color. So again, if I click on the total, you can see those two are highlighted in cooler colors, if you like, so that's um, smaller flows. If we want to change any of these values, we can um, edit them directly in the cells uh, here. Um, or if we want to change the total number of trips for coming from a particular zone, we can edit it in the, in the row total. So if I put in 400 here, uh, what that'll do is uh, distribute that number in the same proportion through all the other pairs. And similarly here, uh, I can type a new number here. So I go from 461 up to 500. That's going to scale up all the individual trips um, in that column. Sorry, I moved it forward. So it's actually that column there. Um, you can also, if you want to scale up the whole table, you can uh, change this value here. So uh, changes the values throughout the whole table, throughout the whole matrix. Okay, so once you've set those values, um, you can close that and um, close the panel. And when you close the panel, um, you'll see this message saying changes are detected. Um, do you want to save those changes? When you say yes, you'll see this syncing uh, bar. What, what that does is it's synchronizing the model that you've just edited locally with the cloud model so that those two models have the same data within them. People, a common question is, okay, that's great, but where do I get those numbers from? Where do I get that uh, demand data from? Well, that's, uh, that, that depends on the location. Um, we don't have an automated way of doing that. This is an analysis tool, and in order for the analysis to be useful, the input to the analysis has to, be, has to reflect the traffic that's on those roads. So the, although we can make an estimate from the size of the road, how heavy the traffic is likely to be, um, we can't make uh, anything more than a um, broad guess at that. Commonly, people get this traffic demand data either from on-site surveys or using on-site technology such as uh, license plate recognition cameras or Bluetooth readers or in some areas the data is available to purchase from traffic data vendors who use um, GPS tracking and other methods to uh, collect, that, collect that data. 
Gordon, we had a couple yeah. of questions if you're interested in, in fielding a few. Sure. Let's let's go ahead with that. Yeah, let's. All right. So one of the questions was, is it vehicles per trips per hour or per, per day? So is it per hour or per day? <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Okay. So if I um, go back to talking, I, I was just going to cover that. I, if I go back to these configurations, you can see there are um, five configurations there. And the quick simulation one um, is the one we used before is 10 minutes. So it was actually... Um, the number of trips for that simulation term. So if I open this up again, um, and I'll, I'll walk you through the different um, configurations that are there, and hopefully that will answer this question. So at the moment, if I open this simulation window, sorry, it just pops up on the other screen. Um, we're using this quick simulation. So if I go into parameters and look at what's called the terms, the simulation term, you can see here it starts at 8 a.m. and finishes at 8.10 because this is just a quick one that we're doing to get some animation, so that's 10 minutes. So the demand there uh, for this particular model um, is just for, uh, for that 10 minutes is this a.m. 10 demand, um, and that's purely the demand for that 10 minutes. If we go to the short morning and change to that simulation. You can see that's for this AM60 demand. I actually had the wrong one selected in the demand editor here before. That's I'm confusing a little bit. So this one is for, if we go from uh, the simulation term here is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., so that's an hour. So this number here is the total number of trips in an hour in that simulation term, whereas for the quick simulation, the one I showed you before, which is this 10-minute guy here, you can see that that's approximately one-sixth of the, of the value. So these are, these are much smaller numbers. These are the number of trips within that 10-minute period. So often when you collect that um, traffic demand data, it'll be for a specific time. Often it's for the peak hour of the day, either the, the morning peak or the, the evening peak. Um, so common cases for traffic simulation are running for one hour of the, the peak hour or maybe sometimes longer for three or four hours covering maybe 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. or something like that. So it all depends on the period of time that you want to simulate. Obviously, the longer you simulate, the longer that process is going to take to run and the more results you're going to, you're going to get. Great, thanks. Uh, there are a few more, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to slow you down too much if you need to keep, keep rolling along. Well, I think, I mean, we've probably got time for one more at the moment. I have a few more um, things to show, but uh, yeah, if you have one more, maybe I can answer that quickly. Sure. Uh, there was a question about trucks. Is there a way to enter a ratio or express uh, an amount of trucks? Yeah, yeah, there is, and um, I'll I'll get to that just in a second. Um, I mean, I, actually, I've I've got a thing set up for it here, so let's do that now. Um, okay, I'm going to close this and uh, not change that. I'll go to this one called All Cars. Um, so here, what we're doing is we're re reducing the the uh, are changing the um, number of trucks to zero. It's, it's the opposite of what you're asking, but I, I guess you'll get the idea from there. So I've switched to that proposal. I open the traffic analyst panel again. Um, and then I go to this, um, on the demand menu, you see this thing called demand divisions. So um, that has uh, under here the different types of vehicles and the percentage value for each of those vehicles. So this one is called um, all cars. So if I uh, run that simulation, I'll just move this out of the way. Actually, I'll close that and we'll just let you see this running to begin with. Speed it up a bit. Okay. 
I know this is probably going to be choppy because I'm running at quite a high speed, but if I stop it there and move through, I think you can see that it's all cars. There's no trucks there. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll open that traffic analyst panel again and change the, change the ratios. And then we'll um, do that again. Okay, so demand divisions, got private vehicles. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say we'll have none of these large cars, um, none of these, none of these, and we'll have 50% um, trucks. So you've got 50% trucks and 50% small cars. Okay. And you go into demands. Uh, if you want to define different divisions, you can actually select different divisions there. Um, we only have one defined called division. Um, but if you wanted to create different matrices with different divisions, this is where you would select it. So that's okay. We're going to make sure that's synced. I'm going to close that. And then we'll run that simulation again. Now, when you um, rerun a simulation like this with the same name, while it's running, it's going to re replace the one that you already have. So if you want to um, keep the one you had before, what you need to do is you need to create a, a new configuration with a different name and run that instead, and that will not overwrite the one you had before. Quite often, what you want to do is you're, you're iterating and, and creating, um, you know, changing parameters and going back over this loop several times. So we took the decision to, if you don't change the name, it just replaces the stuff you had there before. Otherwise, you end up with a, a huge pile of kind of duplicates and you can't figure out which one's which. So now if I run this, I think you can see there that every second vehicle is roughly is a truck. So um, that's, that was a quick demonstration of, of how to change that in there. I think this is a quick question, Gordon. Um, some folks are noticing that maybe you have some more menus in the uh, traffic analyst panel than they do. Um, what, what version are you running, or is there some reason there would be that difference? Yeah, there is a reason. I'll go back there. Sorry, I should have explained that at the start. The Traffic Analyst Panel, um, it's probably no surprise to you that this is a modified version of Commuter, the application that was acquired. And what we tried to do is we tried to make it um, as simple as possible for people who weren't accustomed to this. So there's actually three different modes of viewing it on here. So uh, if you go to Display Actions, you'll get this Actions panel. And on that, there's a small menu, and it controls the view, the type of view. So if we look at simple, like that, you'll see there's only one thing on the demands menu. And this is the default uh, configuration that's set up. Um, after some discussion, we came to the agreement that uh, this was the best way to present it, to not overwhelm users with too many menus. However, I think if you start, once you start getting into things like changing the uh, ratio of vehicles and so on, you need what we have as the standard view there. And once you go to standard view, um, you get more menus, and you'll also get more actions available for you on this drop-down menu. This actions window also has the actions displayed in a different way. Um, you can either view it uh, like that as a table or as a tree. Um, and these are the actions that are available to you. You can also see there that you can um, bind those actions to keyboard keys. So if you want to define hotkeys for um, each of the actions, you can do that in this in this panel. Great, okay. thanks. Uh, right, let's get back to uh, my script here. Let's see what, what else I was going to cover. Okay, so we've covered demand, we've covered the zones, um, how to edit the demand and so on. 
Okay, so get to now is what uh, what kind of analysis results can you see on the main window? So if I close this guy and go back to the quick analysis um, one. Okay, so this selector up here within the traffic study area asset card, put on approach, uh, per approach, and click on short morning here to load one of the sets of results. Um, so although, you know, this animation player says, you know, it looks like you're just loading an animation. In fact, what you're doing there is you're loading a whole set of results that includes an animation. And one of the things in the results is uh, the aggregated values of delay time at each of the intersections and the queue length. So these guys here are the um, blocks on each of the approaches and if you hover over it you'll see um, the queue length and the average delay. A common question is here is how does this relate to level of service? Well one of the things we've chosen to do is and initially here is display the uh, the average delay, which is the, the pure figure, if you like. Level of service uh, is something that's commonly used to, to measure um, how an intersection is performing, but that varies on country, on jurisdiction. Um, so the, the tables that um, say level of service 8F normally, the, the actual delay that's used there isn't the same in each place. So you know, over time, um, it may be that we add uh, sort of country kit type things in order to do that, uh, but at the moment what you, you see here is the pure value of delay. Okay, so um, if I just go to the 10 minute one to begin with, uh, you'll see that that looks pretty good, there's not much in the way of cues, all of them are shown in blue apart from this one that's shown in red. Red indicates where the delay is high above a normally meaning either uh, level of service E or F. I think at the moment we've chosen the threshold to be 60 seconds I believe. Um, and all the others are on blue, but if after an hour of simulation, so that's after 10 minutes of simulation, the quick simulation, as you can see on there, 8 till 10 past 8, if I click on the, the longer simulation, you can see that the queues have really started to build up. And you know, if all we were seeing was this information, uh, that, you know, that would be interesting, but it might not tell us the whole story, it might not tell us why that's happening. And so this is where the combination of these analysis results and the animation is useful. So if I uh, start the animation and put it up to maximum speed just so it spins through quickly and gets us to um, to uh, so that the simulation is running so that there's more traffic there. You can see that uh, it starts off the traffic's running uh, okay, but there are vehicles here trying to turn left um, across oncoming traffic. For the first 10 minutes or so, that works okay, um, but then the volume of traffic uh, builds up a bit more, and those vehicles start to start to get blocked. And as they get blocked, um, the queues start to build up. Um, and these boxes that are drawn here are the uh, maximum queues. So, in fact. Stop it there. You can see that um, you know this queue is really starting to build, and it's being um, that's being caused by cars here that are trying to turn left. And in fact, there's actually one guy here in this lane who also wants to turn left, but he can't get in. So what he's going to do is he's going to get to the front of the queue and block the other lane as well. So I go forward a bit more. You see that's what happened. This guy's trying to get into that lane, and he can't. So now we've got both lanes blocked. And this is a common thing that might happen. So, you know, in, in on site, what might be the case there would be that this might actually have traffic signals with a left turn arrow, or it may be that you just can't turn left there. You know, there might be a no left turn sign. So, you know, let's try that in our design and see what the difference is. I'm not going to change this model. What I'll do is I'll just go to the master model quickly. Um, in order to make that change. The reason I'm not changing it here is that whenever you change something in your road design, 
the, any results that you've previously generated are um, deleted. You'll get a warning message about that. But um, we couldn't hold on to the results if the model has changed because then those results don't really apply to that model. So I don't want to get rid of these results now. So I'll switch back to a different proposal and, and show you the change in that in that other proposal. Okay, so if I go to um, that same intersection or an intersection like it, in fact I've, I've already changed it. So you now just to edit the intersection you have to come out of traffic simulation mode. So if I select that intersection and uh, then select edit and so there's two modes here, geometry and lane markings. So if I go to lane markings mode if I go to this guy at the bottom, traffic turn to, this is describing the turns possible um, on this intersection from the point of view of the side road. So it's only visible for a three-way intersection, a T intersection. If I go to left and right, what I'm saying is that you can turn in both directions from the side road. You can turn left and you can turn right. And you see if I click off that, you know, the median has opened up. If I edit that again and say right only, um, we get what's called a right in, right out intersection where from the side road you can only turn right and you can only turn into that side road from the main road. So that's how to modify that intersection. So if I go back to a, um, a proposal in which I've done that already, uh, I go back into traffic simulation. Spin it around so you can see it from the same orientation. Okay, so I've, this was the intersection that was causing us problems before with left turning traffic. So now the median's closed there, so we can't have traffic turning left. And what we're saying is any traffic that does want to make that maneuver, that does want to go there, is going to have to find an alternative way of doing that. If there was a possibility in the model for the traffic to do that, then they would. If a U-turn was allowed here, you would actually just get traffic going to the next intersection and doing a U-turn and coming back. That might just move your problem from here to there. In fact, I think in this intersection, U-turns aren't allowed there, so um, we won't see that happening, and the trip will, in fact, just not even start because um, there is no valid route to get from one origin, to, from that origin to that destination. But anyway, let's let's run this again, or let's have a look at the results here for this one. And you can see that the queues are hugely reduced. There's hardly any queuing on the main part here. I've also closed the median at this intersection here, so you can see there's there's no problem um, there either. The, uh, there is virtually no queue at all. Um, there are queues here, but that's because of um, traffic. There's quite a high volume of traffic trying to make this kind of dog-like movement here, um, and I'll get onto that in a moment. But yeah, just to highlight that, I'll run the animation for this, and you can see the difference uh, that all the vehicles here are just moving straight along and nothing's turning left. Now, that appears to have fixed that problem. Your model is, your design is performing much better there, but of course you've got to remember that what you've done is you've taken out the opportunity for vehicles to for people to travel from a zone on to the east here to this one on the south. So you would need to provide some alternative for that if you want the same traffic to get through. Okay, good. Okay, I have just one more um, proposal to go through and then we can go to some more questions again. And that's um, the issue of traffic lights. So this is to do with intersection control. How are those intersections controlled? Um, at the moment, we have no visualization of traffic lights, traffic signals um, in InfraWorks. You can add static ones yourself, just as um, uh, street furniture. But they're not dynamic. They don't change. You know, the view doesn't change. Um, right now. But if you go into um, the Traffic Analyst panel, again, 
this is there's an option in here where you can change how an intersection is controlled. So if um, we zoom in here and select uh, this intersection, um, and go adjust like that, that will um, raise the intersection editor for that. That can be a little tricky to do, so another way of doing it is to go control intersections. And then there's a selector at the top that actually isn't quite big enough at the moment, but shows you the different intersections. When you select an intersection there, the view will move in the main window to that intersection. Okay, so if we go to this guy along here, that's intersection nine, I believe, the last one on the list. You can see that that's got more tabs in here called groups and phases, whereas the one I had before, when I still selected before, just has a single tab. So if it just has a single tab, that means it's a, a priority intersection. So either an intersection where there's a main road and the side road is, you know, stop or yield or uh, give way depending on where you are. Um, or in a four-way intersection, you know, there there might be other priorities in there, and you can you can control those fixed signals, they're called, so stop sign, yield, give way, and so on. Um, or, it, and if you want to change that to be um, traffic lights, traffic signals, you just press this signalize button. Uh, when you do that, you'll get all the other tabs appearing, and then you need to create several groups and several phases. I'll um, go to one I prepared earlier and then walk you through it. It takes a few minutes to do. So that was intersection nine, this one here. So the, the phases, here we've got phases A, B and C. So if I click on A, you'll see that's that phase there. Phase B, phase C. Now you can see that these phases um, have not been set up correctly yet. You've got this turn is conflicting with that turn, which wouldn't happen in real life, cause an accident. So let's let's fix that up as an exercise. The other thing we need to look at are the signal groups. So here's group one, group two, and group three. What a, a signal group is is a group of movements, traffic movements that operate uh, together. So you can see group one, there's nothing conflicting there, group two and group three. Group one is in phase A and in phase B. And you can also see that on that menu. So really what we want to do is we want to switch that one off. Okay. So then phase A, B and C. So the phases are just um, copying the groups there. It might be what we want to do is we want to create a separate group for this left turn guy here. So let's do that. Let's create a separate group and call it group four. Then we go to the turns, and this is where you map each of the turns to each of those signal groups. So, th so this group here, which was in group one, we want to put him in group four. Okay. And now with the phases, we can put group four in that one and then apply it. And then that's phase A. Phase B is like that. We don't want group four in that one. And we don't want it in that one either. So I'll put that in red. But the other thing you can have is what we call a third state, which is called off. Um, the off state, which is when that movement is going, um, you can put that group off and then those um, th that turn there can filter across oncoming traffic. So what we do here is we say filter group one. So what that means is if I go back to the phases, you can see 
oh no, sorry, here, then because the group is off, this uh, movement here will now filter across there. I don't know what. When we run that, when we run the simulation, you'll see that the traffic that wants to make that movement will wait for oncoming traffic um, and then move across it. That's the difference basically between getting a green arrow showing a green arrow to that movement and just showing the green roundel where traffic knows it has to wait for the oncoming traffic before it can proceed. We're kind of running short of time, so I don't have to, time to go through that in, in more detail now. I just wanted to show you there that there is quite a lot of um, facility to change the traffic signals and to enter the values that you need in there. Another question people often ask about that is, okay, that's great, but where do I get that information from? Well, again, that depends on your locality. Often this information will be available from the um, traffic authority in that region um, and will be either a fairly raw file that is loaded into the controller or be part of some centralized system. Um, previous to joining Autodesk, I was based in uh, Australia and the system they used there had all this information um, that could be uploaded into a simulation system so that the process was fairly automated. Um, it really just depends on where you're using it and what access you have to that data. But uh, of course, you, what you can always do is just go on site with a stopwatch and observation and just make some measurements of what those traffic um, maneuvers are and then code them manually into the, into the system as I've shown today. If you do need more help, there is quite a, um, a detailed manual here. Um, it, the menu for it is a little bit um, broken up because um, we've taken out some of the features that are not uh, currently available, um, but the rest of it does go into that in um, quite a lot of detail. So talking about the turns and the groups and so on um, in the traffic signals, you'll get a lot more information there. You can also go directly there um, from the uh, intersection panel I was talking about. If you just press on help here, it'll go directly to that controller's page. So you can see a lot more information there. Okay, Eric, how are we doing for questions? Um, we have a few. and Gordon uh, Chuckley here. And, uh, go ahead, Chuckley. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah, yeah. One question that I want to, you know, because we have less time here, I want to ask. There is one, a couple of questions on how delay and queues are calculated. So, context is: Are we using HCM or what? Uh, can you elaborate on that? So, um, that, that's what I was saying before about um, the values we're showing here are not specific to any one method like HCM or or any other. Um, national method like that. What we're doing within the simulation is we're uh, uh, the delay in the simulation. So if there's, uh, if I go back to one of the uh, animations here, I think it's easiest to, to do it there if I um, just play this. Um, so when, let's go here. So in this situation here, we time each vehicle that's at the, on this road and we measure the delay. And so that's the measurement that we're showing you there. That's a pure measurement in the simulation of what the delay was. And the queue length is purely the queue length measured by adding up the lengths of these vehicles to the back of the queue. So you can see that doesn't depend on any um, government body's definition of levels of service or any other thing. We're just running a simulation and measuring it as if it was, um, as if as if you were on site and just measuring the real world. So it doesn't. This is this can be applied anywhere and doesn't uh, um, isn't tied specifically to any one country's method methodology. Uh, next question. Gordon, is there a way to generate a report? Uh, of your results? Uh, 
at the moment in this preview version, there is uh, no way to extract those results. No, the only results you can see are the results on screen. Um, obviously, bearing in mind the caveats that we said before about this being a preview feature and that we can't promise that any of it will be in uh, upcoming products because of the restrictions um, on us about doing so, um, that would be part of our plans should this feature go ahead. And what about capturing uh, a video of, of the simulation? Is that possible? Uh, it is possible. Um, the best way of doing it is actually using um, a screen capture program that records everything. You can use the um, the tool, the screencast tool that's in here, um, but that because of the way that that's set up, that won't actually catch everything within um, the animation. So what you're better to do is use a third party tool to do that uh, at the moment, because the screencast that's within in Forex 360 doesn't capture everything in the, in the traffic simulation process here. Is it possible to import uh, traffic count data from other software? Um, the automatic import, um, at the moment, really the only way to do that is to cut and paste from Excel into the into the traffic um, demands window. Um, there are some ways of um, importing here. Uh, I think that's not visible on there. So at the moment, um, if you have traffic count data in some other format, um, like if I open up Excel here, you know, you, the, you can take that uh, either way into there, you know, and edit it here and put it back in. Mm. But um, there's no, um, you know, in a few, if you, you um, I can do that for all of those. You can see that if I do that, the um, the uh, numbers should agree. Oh no! Anyway, I've got that here on a previous one. Um, yeah, that's a way of checking that your matrix is uh, how you expect it to be. Often the traffic data comes to you in spreadsheet format. Um, so you know that's that's a good way of of getting it into the model from there. Does the uh, software handle roundabouts? Uh, well, as you're probably aware, I'm showing um, 2016.2, the current version here, um, and roundabouts are not supported in that version um, for simulation. But if you've looked at any of our roadmaps, you'll see that support for roundabouts is one of those things that is high on the list. I'm not seeing any uh, any other ones. Chakri, do you have any uh, additional questions you want to throw at Gordon? We did have a lot of great questions. No, not anything. Just wait. All right. Well, that actually works out so pretty there's well. One question that oh, go ahead, go ahead Chakri. Yeah, there's one that has been, has this been tested by any government agencies or how they used it for the results? Uh, okay, so the um, the engine itself that's used to calculate the results, um, this product commuter that was acquired, it was used um, in Australia by the uh, agencies there, the state agencies there, and was approved by them. Um, as far as I'm no, you know, it's it's fairly new and it's only in preview. So, bundled within Infoworks, it's not been tested, but are not being used by any um, of those agencies in order for them to approve that. But as I say, the engine, which is almost entirely unchanged, was uh, used um, and compared to other similar tools um, by the. Uh, RTA, which is the traffic agency in Australia, in New South Wales in Australia. 
I, um, after this, I can send a link to the documentation that shows that if any of you be interested in that. All right, great. I'm going to take back um, control of the presentation, Gordon. Okay. And um, I just have one more slide I want to show everybody. And it's just a reminder that uh, we've got our flood simulation with Infowars 360 uh, using Project Boulder coming up on Wednesday, August 5th. Uh, I believe that's three weeks from now because there's an extra Wednesday um, this month. So please join us for that and watch for uh, information, more detail about that presentation, as well as a link to register for it um, on the different locations that you see listed on the slide. I want to thank everyone for attending. I want to thank Gordon for doing a, a fantastic job presenting uh, this really exciting technology. Chakri, thank you for uh, helping with answering some of the questions. And we hope to see you all and, and then some uh, at our next webcast. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.